Hey everybody, I'm Dan McClellan. I'm a scholar of the Bible and religion, and the fit for this video is Wolverine. Let's take a look at a response to one of my videos. Whether you want to refer to it as God lying or God changing their mind, what God says is going to happen to Adam in Genesis 2.17 doesn't end up happening. All right, let's see what he's got. It means you will certainly die. So death is not simply physical nor spiritual. It can also be in terms of your mode of living. So note that this creator is not actually addressing the words in Genesis 2.17. They're abstracting from the words in Genesis 2.17, this generic concept of death, and then just chasing down the figurative ways that the generic concept of death can be used without ever addressing whether or not the words in Genesis 2.17 are ever used that way. Because they're not. They flatly preclude that figurative use of the generic concept of death. Mot tamut means you will certainly die. It is a paranomastic infinitive using the second masculine singular call form of the verbal root mot to die in combination with the infinitive absolute. There's also a hofal stem use of this same paranomastic infinitive. And between the two of them, there are 56 occurrences of this construction within the Hebrew Bible. And every last occurrence refers specifically to literal physical death. This construction is never once used to refer to any kind of figurative concept of death. And so this creator has entirely ignored the actual words in the verse to just take a step back and abstract from those words the generic concept of death and say, this I can mold into what I need it to be. And so the rest of this part of their video is going to be saying, well, look at these patristic authors who say, no, no, it's not a contradiction because it refers to this figurative extension of the generic concept of death. And then they're going to talk about other passages in the Bible where that generic concept of death is used to refer to mode of living. What they can't do is connect that sense, that usage, with the specific linguistic expression in Genesis 2.17, because that linguistic expression flatly precludes that use. It means on the 24-hour period that you eat of it, or within 24 hours of eating of it, you will die. Now you say many times that if we interpret it this way, that we are presupposing univocality in the Bible. But I would argue back that you are presupposing univocality in the Bible by saying the word yam has one meaning, the 24-hour period, and the word death has one meaning, the separation of spirit and flesh. Now the argument that the Hebrew word yam simply means a 24-hour period is just not true. This is an absolutely laughable straw man. I have never once said that these words can only ever mean one specific thing. I've pointed out that in order to try to approximate the sense that is intended by the author, we have to look at usage. Usage is what determines meaning, and there are all kinds of factors that can play into usage, including what prepositions are attached to it, what particles are used around it, what objects are used, what syntactical constructions are these things occurring in? When we look at Bayom that way, here it has to mean roughly a 24-hour period. Starting off with 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 19, David says, They confronted me in the day of my calamity. Now, did David have a 24-hour period of chaos or calamity? Of course not. He had multiple years of calamity. Yes, this is a construct phrase where the semantic content of the nomen rectum very clearly indicates this is to be understood figuratively. This is not a temporal clause connecting consequences with the time period in which a specific single action takes place. This is different syntax. So this does not bear on how we understand the use of bayom in Genesis 2.17. As Ambrose of Milan says, the word death is subject to manifold interpretation. The word death does not occur in Genesis 2.17. That word does not simply mean a 24-hour period. Based on the context, it can mean multiple things. So this creator has actually never once addressed the actual context of Genesis 2.17. They're trying to leverage other contexts 
to overrule the context of Genesis 2.17, which has been completely ignored throughout the entire video. In conclusion, God did not lie or change his mind. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. All this video has demonstrated is that if you don't have a good grasp of how the Hebrew language works, you can convince yourself that your dogmas are right fairly easily.